man, machine, and nature living in harmony. Hey, what's up guys? Here's an early evening rush hour walk that winds around downtown Toronto's financial district. At this time of year, there are less people at street level as most of the office towers are connected to subway stations and the underground path network. At one point, I do cut through the Scotiabank Plaza lobby where security asked me not to film, but thankfully I was on my way out anyways. This was recorded on Tuesday, November 5th, starting at 4.30 p.m. and it was 5 degrees Celsius at the time. Thanks for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more walks from the city. Enjoy the walk!
good day. This is Br'er Caleb, PhD. And you know by now that my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. Yes, folks, I earned my degree, my specialty. I earned that at the Desert University or the School of Hard Knocks. Today, we're going to deal with something that I really found overwhelmingly. It is profound ignorance, or as if that is a difficult name, overwhelming lack of knowledge. If you look around and watch the politicians talk to each other or presidents trying to get reelected, folks, don't get me started. There is something going on that I don't see exactly why. Because we have a pandemic going on, we now have a possibility to continue from there to restore our connection through restorative justice. This is restorative justice number four. Due to profound ignorance, so an overwhelming lack of knowledge, it doesn't matter whether we're looking for politicians or money management like bankers, they are walking away with billions of dollars and some of them trying to get away with trillions of dollars, which we will see very soon. And it will be confirmed again in the news. I've got some reports or I read material, sometimes information that comes from people that we know with short three initials. I don't want to mention them here, but yes, I like to stay up to date. I call it PMS, confusing spirits for P for politics, M for money, management, and S for spirituality or religion. And due to profound ignorance, we live in today's age, 2020. So we're not living in 1500 or maybe 200 AD. We're living today, 2020. And we have a tremendous advantage compared to the people who lived 500 or 1000 or even 2000 years ago. Our advantage speaks to understand what we need to go through uh, the dark ages. Uh-oh. That was not what I meant. What I wanted to say was that we do not need to go through the dark ages. Although currently it looks like we are going right straight through it. We know, but we're living in an, no longer in a cave. We live in an apartment or we live in a condo or we live in an estate. It means that we should have more awareness of our health and our education. And we know for one thing for sure that the world is not flat. Now, how come we know all those things? Because we have knowledge, we have obtained knowledge. We do not know why God is so complicated or why the concept of God is even real. Profound ignorance. So let us treat ourselves like zombies. Very soon, the end of October, we see a lot of people acting like zombies. Some of them, they don't act, they are zombies the whole life. So profound ignorance is overwhelming lack of knowledge. So let's act as if we are zombies. Or better, let's say we are fish. I don't like zombies so much. Let's assume we are a fish. You saw on the picture, I had a big, huge fish that the guy had caught for a moment. Awesome picture. Now, let's say that we are all like the big fish. It's a very wise fish swimming in a big pond or in the river where we all grew up in. Remember, we are now fish and we have a conversation, an imaginary conversation with Mr. Big Fish. Are you ready for it? The theme or modality is called profound ignorance. I finally found him, my big fish. So let me get out of the way so you can see it. This is big fish number one. And this of course is big fish number two. Which one do you think is bigger? Now we talked about our modality and modality is the theme and it's profound ignorance. A smart person will understand that God is not being separated from men through a natural loss of creation but it's the very awareness within which we move and have our being. Now that sounds like a song. So our new beginning is actually one of the better conversations. It's more comfortable teaching 
and shared with the first century believers, the Nazarenes, a story that they shared about fishes. So I'm going to make it more for today. I'm not sure if you ever went out fishing, but I used to love it as a kid. I left at four or five o'clock in the morning and I was only five, six years old and I went fishing. Boy, I never had big fish, but it was fascinating. So here we go, from one fisherman to another fisherman, listening to conversations between two fishes. Now, I know that's normally not possible, but in our story, it's called a parable. We are going to make it a little simple. It's also called a moral tale and story. It's not a real thing, but it helps you to understand a situation a little better. So, so its real meaning has nothing in common with the first century believers or the original gospel teachings by Jesua HaMashiach, which most people know today as Jesus. Now, I like always to give short names. So BOC stands for Body of Christ. So if the Body of Christ or Christians could rebuild its thinking, if they could rebuild the Body of Christ, life would be like it was for the fishes in this parable. Now, are you ready? A change or a paradigm shift, that means something that has major implications, that has changed, the significant mindset could support a lifestyle built on the original gospel foundation. In other words, if we would have stuck with the stories of Yeshua HaMashiach or Jesus, we would have been able to sustain a solid lifestyle today. They could learn how to use the scriptures as intended. They were a key of knowledge. That was the function of the story. A key of knowledge to open the narrow gate. And I'm sure you have heard about the narrow gate and the broad way to gain entrance to the inner kingdom. See, life is very simple. When we get to the point where we remember the story about the broad way and the small gate, we have the keys for the gate to enter the small, the kingdom, the inner kingdom. And there lives a king in that inner kingdom. And his name is Adonai, El Shaddai, or also called Abba, father. So back to the fish story. Several fish were wandering around in the water and yapping with each other and saying, you know, there's something what we don't understand. What is water all about? And I said, that is weird. They told me that there's life in it and there's a being in water. But we've never seen water. What in the world are we talking about? And instead of arguing, some wise fish suggested to go and see a wise, learned fish. Now, remember, this is a parable, an allegory. A story just to simplify things. Now, that fish would know everything. After many heated discussions, they could not convince each other. So they asked the big fat fish, because besides being big, he was also fat. We live for a very long time in the river. Now you saw just a picture from my buddy. He was so big and so huge that he could have had the answer to the predicament. At least they hoped he had. And so they went together to see the old, wise, learned face who knew all things. And, you know, they were going to ask him what water looked like, what it was, and where it came from altogether. And so they went to travel to the seabed of the wise, learned face, and they asked if he could listen. The old, wise face the shook his head and said, okay. Tell me your story. And after a while, he listened to them. He shook his head and said, Oh, you foolish ones that do not meditate. Meditation means think for a while. Think on the inside. And the few of you who seek, they're wise. You live and you move and have your being in water. From the water, you came to the water. And you return to the water. Do you know that you live in the water, yet you do not know it? In the same way, you live in God. Yet you ask me, show us God. God is in all things. 
and all things are in God. So does a fish see the water? No, they see the physical form of the objects that only exist within the water or fish. The water is the mind within all the material objects exist or continue living and stay alive. Wow. Some of the fishes were looking at each other. So, wow, that is deep, though. All of humanity and creation exist and intimately connected with the mind of God. Whoa. The fish said, so we are in the water and we are connected. And while as a fish, an organic man can see the physical objects or he can see another man, another humanity, he can see a woman or a child, a person, only since the organic man is blind due to a virus called A and E. A virus? Is that like the COVID virus? No, it is worse. It's the Adam and Eve virus. It's called sin. Sin. Oh, they miss their goal. So they all are suffering of a virus, and that is why they are spiritually blind. Oh, now I understand what you're talking about. And there is a cure, and it is so sophisticated that many men will fail to see it. For the carnal man is blind, just like the fish is blind, to the reality of the mind and the spirit. Oh, I see what you mean. One of the fishes said, I know, I know. There is a book called, B -b 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 what is it called again? Before Leaving Earth or something, Bible. That is correct. In the complete Jewish Bible in Acts 17, 28. It says, for in him we live and move and exist. And some poets among you will say, and we are his children. Like famous scientists and astronomers are coming to an understanding, we are a great stuff. They stated that the universe stuff is mind stuff. Some people say mind blowing stuff. You see, the church was a trustworthy spiritual source and a healing center until the traditions of the immature faith-based believers became the only acceptable doctrines of belief by the intervention of a secular authority by the Roman Empire, Constantine. Roman Empire? No, that is an emperor. Oh, yes. So it is in the Roman Empire, and the emperor, the head boss, the guy we lead, so that is something like Trump is doing at the moment? Yes, and that is correct. Constantine is basically just like Trump, the head of the state who hunted down and murdered the Abadite Nazarenes and spiritual Christians as heretics, people that should be outcasted. Uh-oh. I hope you all understand. We are talking about the prodigal son and the prodigal daughter, you and me. We remember through the process of recollection, in other words, of calling to mind why the scriptures designed to open the eyes of the hearing, of the ear, to see and experience all spiritual truth that the unmixed gospel teachings revealed to the prototype disciples of the way. Why do I say prototype? Because they were the first century believers. People that were basically prototypes. Now you understand, don't you? You guys remember the first robot 20 years ago in cartoons? And now today we have cell phones, we have robots, we have people being massaged and pampered. Well, so were also the first disciples. The disciples that followed Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, they were called prototype disciples. And they had a special name. They came from a tribe called the Nazarenes. Do you get it? Now remember the story between the fish? The fish, they were in water. Man is connected with God. And in order to break free the shackles of the blindness for the enslaving of the church, they must throw out the Mesopotamian quasi-gnostic teachings. 
In other words, all the stuff that has nothing to do with God, that is ugly. They are praying to Satan, Baal, Moloch. They're doing yucky stuff with little babies, sacrificing. They alienated modern Christians, Christians from the original gospel foundation teachings, rendering Christianity in the words of the Adam Clark Bible commentary. Adam Clark is a well-known guy that made a commentary on reading the passages at read Hebrews 1 through 5, based upon a vain and baseless vision of both the very nature and destiny of humanity. At its core, you as a Christian believer have virtually nothing in common with what Jesua thought. In other words, Jesua was the first one. He set up the way, the truth, and the light. And what he taught then, and what we have made it today, the body of Christ, the Christianity, has nothing in common with what Jesua taught. Because we screwed up, folks, the bug, remember I talked about the virus, the AD virus, the sin virus, has changed our thinking. Now, hopefully through the analogy with the prodigal son and daughter, I've demonstrated that you possess the innate ability to tap into the truth of all truth. That excuse will you use to defend. So what excuse will you defend for complacency? Why are you waiting? And if you see it, that you not only do as the offspring of your heavenly father, what is that? But you also possess the innate ability to tap into the truth of all truth. Now the prodigal son left the home. We all did. So we understand that as prodigal son and daughters, we are living in positions we don't like. We want to be connected again with God the Father. That is the one of our primary, our first purpose. Our soul is living our present life. Are you prepared to admit that our life was a failure? You see, when I became aware that I was a prodigal son, although I was a Christian, I was raised in a family of Christianity, studied Christianity, preached Christianity, I came to the conclusion that I was a prodigal son. When we run into mountains of problems that were so big, and I've talked about it in other videos, so I don't have to share it now, but the mountains of problems that we faced were so big, I couldn't get through it. And then finally it dawned to me, I am that prodigal son. And when I acknowledged that I wanted to go back to the Father, he showed me the way, the truth, and the light. And it had nothing to do with Christianity. Yet, if you have nothing else, Christianity is something that will help you. But you need the key to the doors to unlock the kingdom. And there is a way, my friend, like the fishes. You are swimming in the water. You are living in his being. This is Brad Caleb, PhD. Tough times never last. But tough people, they do. God bless you. Have a great time.